Queen, are you ready to go to number two? Yes. Yes. All right. Number two on the list is money problems or just financial disagreements or anything like that. Y'all know sometimes money makes people funny, funny right? Um, so, Queen, before I start reading some stuff, what are your initial reactions to money problems being a cause for divorce? Over 50% of Black Americans are unmarried, and only 2% of Black families in America have a net worth over $1 million. We are on our journey to not only join that 2%, but grow that 2%. Facts. I'm Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game, with my beautiful co-host. I'm Sinclair, a.k.a. The Health Nerd. You can go to our website at TheM4Show.com, our Instagram at TheM4Show, and our YouTube channel at Melanated Married Millionaires in the Make. And welcome to the M4 Show. Queen, are you ready to go to number two? Yes. Yes. All right. Number two on the list is money problems or just financial disagreements or anything like that. Y'all know sometimes money makes people funny, funny. right? Um, so, Queen, before I start reading some stuff, what are your initial reactions to money problems being a cause for divorce? I uh, knew that one. I would almost assume that that one probably has the highest percentage mm. of, of of why it leads to um, divorce. Because, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a widespread, I think, problem that a lot of money. folks. Yeah, that a lot of folks have at some point just dealing with the stress of money. Um so dealing with the stress of money with another person, depending on how personalities may may align or clash, depending on, again, how many how many of these conversations you've had beforehand, how you're going to handle situations, how money is handled between the relationship. Um, I think those also those conversations are also important so that, again, when money problems are going to arise, it, it's not it, it, like it's inevitable. So I think it's important, again, to have those conversations and kind of know how you are going to handle those problems when they come so that it's not a surprise and you're not trying to figure it out as it's coming because right. that's going to be very stressful, right. especially, if, again, if, if kids are in the mix. Mm -hmm. So according to divorce statistics, a final straw reason. So it doesn't say this is like usually the 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 reason, but a final straw reason for divorce is lack of co compatibility in financial arena and causes almost 41% of divorce, mm. right? Um, to be honest, this is the one that I'm most worried about because I think money-wise, we have different ideas of what to do with money sometimes. Um, and even this morning, we were having a good conversation about real estate and it got a little bit stressful. And it's not a situation to where it's like, we don't have enough money. It's more so a situation of, okay, we have X amount of dollars, what do we want to do with X amount mm -hmm. of dollars? You know, if we give Sinclair a million versus give Devon a million, things might be a little bit different about how the, the money gets spent. Right. And I think that's the other side of the coin. That's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Definitely. When you, when you're, when you're struggling and you have those financial uh, concerns of not having enough bills or not enough money to pay the bills. I think it's a different kind of struggle when you have abundance and you have a differing opinion on what to do with the abundance. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, any thoughts on that? You just be thinking I would be wilding out with a, with a bunch not of money. Not wilding out, but it's, we do have, there, there is a difference what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Not, not saying that what I would do would be better. Not saying what you would do would be better, but they're, they're different. And I think that's the, the struggle in communicating and we do a good job at communicating, but I mm -hmm. think that's the struggle in, okay, we have this X amount of dollars. What do we do with it? You think we should do this? I think we should do this. And then. How do we come up to an agreement mm -hmm. where nobody feels like they lost? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. <laughs> I feel like in our relationship, how we've kind of figured it out is that you're more financially savvy. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we can, we have conversations. Absolutely. So I'm able to voice my opinion most of the time, though at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, Hey, this is your lane. We're going to do, we're going to do whatever you want. I disagree. 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna talk about it. So one one example is all right. We're gonna get back to the episode in a second, but breathe. If you've ever had a brilliant idea, I'm pretty sure everybody just took a breath right there, right? Because we all have amazing ideas. But I got a question for you: What's stopping you from taking that idea and actually making it into a business? Actually executing on your brilliance. My name is Devon Travell, and in 2018, I was able to create, market, and sell my own product while still working a nine to five. And through the years, I've taken the lessons we've learned, the expensive webinars that I've gone to, and the dozens of business books that I've read, and I've discovered seven simple steps to launch your business. If you're ready to take your business idea to the next level and make it real and start making profit, from your passion, head to www.launchitcommunity.com and grab yourself the book. We've been able to make it very simple, affordable, and easier than ever to start that business while still working your nine to five. And we take entrepreneurs every single Friday and we, we talk to them. We teach them about how to use social media. We teach them about how to set up their Instagram account, how to use Shopify, how to use Printful and other tools that can help you Take your business to the next level, but not take tons of time away from your nine to five and your busy life that you already have. So if you're ready to take that idea to the next level, make sure you head to www.launchitcommunity.com. Get yourself a book and join our free accountability calls. Now, let's get back to the episode. Getting into investing into to real estate, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to either pay off credit cards or invest in real estate. and because you are our real estate guru, you were like, you know what? Let's slow down a little bit on the credit card payment. So let's take our time on that. And instead, let's make sure that we can save up, boom, buy this real estate property. And then we'll go back to the credit cards, mm -hmm. right? So in that sense, I listened to you. I was like, you know what, Queen? I got you. You want to invest in real estate? You want me to slow down on credit cards? I got you, Queen. And that's exactly what we did, right? We see that, how that went down differently. This is not the time to, to get into that, though. No, but that's that is eighty percent of what happened. Sure, at, at least, right? Um, another situation, Bitcoin, right? We needed to to make a, a nice little pullout, nice little withdrawal. I was like, okay, Queen, I got you. I'll listen to you. Boom, did it. So I'm not saying that's every situation, but I do think that there is a good back and forth of what we end up doing with money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the other thing that money sometimes does is money is sometimes attached to, well, especially in America power. Mm -hmm. So when one person in the relationship has more access to the money, they have more seemingly power in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's accurate? Yes. Yeah. In our situation, something that we've done and Steve Harvey's talked about this on, on one of the accounts too. Uh, but he talked about having several different bank accounts. I think that's something that we've done to split up the power of the money to make sure we both have access to almost all the money that we have access to, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, Sinclair has her individual account that I don't have access to, but sometimes I ask her for a dollar. Yes. You have a dollar? Yeah, you can have a dollar. Bet. Uh, I have my individual account. Uh, we have our joint account, which has most of our funds and pays some of the bills. And then we have the business account. So she has access to all the accounts except my personal one. I have access to all the accounts except her personal one. So the power in money financially is pretty much equal. You like that setup or do you not like that setup? Um, I do like that setup. I think what the concern that I brought up in the past is we need to get better at how we manage the uh, the business funds and basically how we pay ourselves. You mean how we pay me? Sure. Yeah. You be getting paid. I get paid. Yeah, you be getting I paid. Could get paid more. You you, you want a raise on the podcast? <laughs> That's what's happening right now. You you over here pressuring me for a raise. Mm, mm, mm. We, we gonna talk about your quarterly reviews. We we gonna get to it. Anyways, like I said. <laughs> Um, just to make sure like most, a lot of what, what entrepreneurs say, like they say, pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just need to get better at making sure that we have our expenses covered, right? We're not struggling. Um, while we have business funds available, 
doesn't make sense for us ever to be really struggling because we that's our money too right mm-hmm. so we need to also just get better at especially as we both move towards becoming full time that's going to be super important right um so yeah, I do, we do definitely need to get better at that. I think once we get better at that, I will feel more confident. What does better at that look like? At how you get paid. Like we don't even know how that like have that set mm-hmm. procedures, like how that happens. Mm-hmm. So I mean, to simply have a procedure about how we pay ourselves would make me feel better. Got you. Okay. I'm spending a lot of time on this one because, again, I feel like this is the point that we need to get stronger in. Mm -hmm. Right. And very very transparent. If folks have, you know, advice for us, especially as entrepreneurs on best ways that we can handle money, best ways that we can divide up money, all that stuff within the business. Mm -hmm. That's helpful because for me, that's the thing that I think causes probably the most tension within our entrepreneurship relationship. Um. We do yes. have a comment in there. Go ahead. You've heard of the love languages, even apology languages. Why not learn your partner's financial language? Mm, that's a good one. What, what is your financial love language or your financial language? Mm-hmm. So my financial language is reinvestment. <laughs> <laughs> my financial language is all money in, right? So I usually don't pay myself personally, because I like to keep the money in the business to buy more board games, to be able to travel, to be able to pay staff members, to buy camera equipment, to do all that stuff rather than paying myself at this current moment because I have other streams. What is your financial language, Queen? Um, It's more of a balance between like using the funds to enjoy life now, but also reinvest. I'm also into reinvesting. That's why he's talking about real estate. Like that's one of my preferred forms of reinvesting. Um, but I'm also an advocate of paying yourself first. Mm. Um, so yes, we, we have worked hard to build this. We should also reap some of that benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm an advocate of finding a balance for both, but I do love to travel. That's why, you know, part of my, she part does. of my why. Right? I like to travel too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we should be able to budget for trips. Like that should be something that is set aside from the money from the business is, 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 is going towards our ability to travel. That's which we important do. to us, which we do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, this is a live intimate. What's another good word that describes this podcast. What's currently happening. Sinclair. Uh, you, you got it. Go. It's right there. Uh huh. I literally don't have it. No, I was just <laughs> trying to avoid the, the awkward silence, uh, <laughs> but you know, again, finances and money can be a huge tension in relationships uh, but just because there's tension doesn't mean that there needs to be any type of separation build from the tension be able to communicate thank you thank you for supporting the m4 show and our mission to increase the wealth of black families if you received any value from this episode any value at all any 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 do us a favor and give us a like and subscribe on youtube and apple spotify Anything, all of them, all All of them, wherever you're listening, go ahead and like and subscribe. And after you like and subscribe, make sure you send this episode to at least one family that you really want to see win. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace.